Alrighty, this is Deuce We the People News, okay? Uh, this video is mirrored after uh, Sovereign Living. Alright, so check out his video if you want to uh, learn some more of his uh, way of doing it. Now, this man actually goes to the Supreme Courts and all this. He fights, he fights, and he fights, okay? And I did a video a while back, and you may check it out later, when he filed a criminal complaint against uh, Janet. Uh, Janet is, uh, oh, what is she? She's really in control of the trust of the Federal Reserves. And uh, this is the reason why uh, everything's going up and down, you know, uh, filing debts and this, that, here and there between the United States um, Corporation with the Federal Reserves. Okay, so she's kind of a, um, go between between the two uh, jurisdiction all right um, this was gonna be an interesting case that I have not read and so I'm here say but I guess he's got the copy of the case and read it himself but the 10th Circuit did actually come out according to him okay uh, and say there is common law which wait a minute, <laughs> it's a totally different jurisdiction than um, administrative, okay? Um, but it, I thought I'd bring it up because we talk about some of these things and uh, sometimes administrative, um, you know, brings in criminal codes under the statutes, rules, and regulations uh, of the administrative side, all right? So they... And then every now and then, the courts actually put a little salt and pepper of common law in there to kind of uh, give them a little bit more power to extend to the codes, statutes, and rules, and regulations. Now, that being said, I am led to believe and do believe all statute, codes, rules, and regulations is Roman civil law. Now, they say it's not law, but it is law. It's just not law here in the United States. It's law in the Roman uh, jurisdiction. Okay? And under the Catholic uh, jurisdiction as well. Um, just saying. But in the United States, we're not supposed to have this. Okay? Any statutes and all that that is in the United States is only applied to the government body. It's not intended to be towards the people, right? Because we are supposed to be in common law jurisdiction. Good or bad, but under common law jurisdiction, there must be a victim. Under statute codes, rules, and regulations, they're claiming uh, somehow or another that the state has got magical powers and they can be injured and never have to come to court. That way you can use your Sixth Amendment to confront your accuser. <laughs> All right? Now you can confront your accuser in the common law jurisdiction because there has to be a man or woman making the claim. Uh, just like businesses cannot sue a man or woman. Which it entitles the reason why they call you a person. They want you a business entity where a corporation can sue you and you can sue the corporation. But in common law, I, a man, must uh, sue um, the man or woman that owns Walmart. And they have to come to court. But under the statute, codes, rules, and regulations of the um, Roman civil law, the CEOs and all of them are owners of Walmart, gets to hide in the cubby home and say, well, I didn't know nothing. I'm so dumb and ignorant. And uh, uh, I'm going to blame it on my employees. Bad employees. Bad. Uh, you're fired. Meanwhile, they get to sit in their nice, comfortable house and never suffer any consequences of the harm, damage, and loss to you. But in common law, they couldn't do that. So, anyway, let's uh, proceed forward and hear about this case here. It's the government. 
as for checks and balances on these people. If you want, pause it. And again, this is Sovereign Living. Uh, living. And this is the thing that you can look up if you want to see the whole hour long video. Yeah, but we're not talking about a grand jury right now. was going over the live stream and it is good okay so this is this wfaa tv cause number 95-07735 and the guy that asked the question left and he's on the call and so now he's going to come back and you know it really jerks my chain when people do that shit whatever i don't give a shit if he wants me to answer the question Whatever. Yes, he did. Okay. So. So I'm gonna pause it right here, right quick, so that way you can get all the information right there. If you want to look up this case yourselves and get a copy of it, okay. Tenth Circuit. This is this is a letter from um, that was part of the package from Jay Inlow. Okay, he's a former president of the Republic of Texas, and um, he, he talks about a separate case, M. Sminger versus Farm Credit Bank of Wichita. We're going to stop right there. Now, there is a case here in Texas, by the way, since you brought this up. State of Texas versus Republic Texas. And uh, Texas uh, higher courts said that it is two different jurisdictions. If you guys want to check it out, um, there you go. All right. State of Texas versus uh, Republic Texas. Okay, two different jurisdictions. And, and the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. And it says, having read the Warren Ensminger case, reviewing it with Mr. Ensminger, I'm attempting to summarize in this narrative the basics of the case and the Tenth Circuit decision. This has been read and approved by Mr. Ensminger. So they, they talked about Mr. Ensminger, and, 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 and he's, he's, he, this is approved by him. Mr. Ensminger, with a foreclosure case in progress in a state district court in Oklahoma, filed a suit in federal district court for the Western District of Oklahoma. He was attempting to force the federal district to convene a court in law for the purpose of establishing that he, through land patent, so he had brought forward his land patent, had the highest title to his property. It should be noted that this was an entirely new case, so they didn't remove it, they just filed a new case and had nothing to do with the case in the state court. As a matter of strategy, the laws he cited to create a federal question for the federal district court were the patent laws of the United States, right? This is actually quite brilliant. Dealing with intellectual patents or patents on inventions, okay? That's not land patents. It's a different kind of patent, okay? As he expected, the two banks moved to dismiss for lack of subject matter jurisdiction because the law cited had nothing to do with land patents. The district court agreed with the banks 
and dismissed for lack of subject matter jurisdiction again as expected. They expected that to happen. As soon as the district court dismissed the case, Mr. Ensminger filed a notice of appeal. He did not, however, proceed with the appeal at that point, and the time to file the appeal had expired. So he filed a notice of appeal, and the time to file the appeal had expired. And then he received a letter from the Tenth Circuit Court on their own initiative approximately two months later, after the time to file, um, informing him that they were extending his time to file the appeal. The Tenth Circuit Court was, in essence, asking him to proceed with his appeal. This is kind of unheard of and, and normal appellate procedure, so he proceeded with the appeal. Prior to the appeal, prior to the appeal, the case was heard in the Court of the People, the Common Law Court, and this court's decision was filed with the appeal to the Tenth Circuit Court. Okay? This is so powerful. This is how powerful a common law jury is. You have no idea. And then it says, note, Mr. Emsminger first declared quiet title on himself, thereby extricating himself from the federally privileged 14th Amendment citizen status, allowing him to have his case heard in the proper venue. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about that. I'm not sure if that's really that relevant. Anyways, the Tenth Circuit Court affirming affirmed the ruling of the district court that it did not have subject matter jurisdiction to hear a case for a higher title to land. The key to understanding this is victory is as follows. The order entitled Order and Judgment contains three very important issues. And notice the star, the asterisks, okay? It is a fact by statute and case law that a court of equity does not have jurisdiction to determine legal or highest title to property. It can only determine who has equitable interest as stated in the second page of the order. Mr. Now, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> re, re, now like you're on your property tax, okay? Now, even though you don't have a land patent, right, you have a deed, but does your county or your city have a deed higher than your deed? If not, then they don't have equity invested in your set private property since it's not a creature of the state and there's no citizen nexus attached to your said property because it's not a freaking business. And the courts have a tendency to play favorites for the other attorneys. Okay? <clears throat> so, there lies the problem. Crooks are still crooks. Right? There's no reason why anybody should have to go to the federal government. If they know how to read and write the tax code, then they also know that in order to be um, under the tax code resident, it has to be some form of business. You have to file a return. If you don't file a return on your private property because what? It's not a freaking business. This is not complicated, judges. This is not a complicated, attorneys. Read the darn codes. Ugh. Don't get me started. I got to calm down. All right. It's just, it's so determining how crooked these courts are and how crooked these attorneys are. And it benefits them. Right? I mean, really, technically, if you sit and think about it, if the judge actually goes on your side and says, hey, wait a minute, it's a private property. There's no business. There's no citizen nexus attached to it. And... Uh, under the tax codes, you know, then that means I don't have to pay property tax on my own property. And then the attorney says, like, wait well, a minute, you're telling me I don't have to pay property tax? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's what the codes say. That's what your statutes say. Not me. I didn't write this crap up. It's what they wrote. Yeah, yeah. Sminger was trying to establish that he had the highest title and the court knew that it did not have jurisdiction on the title issue as it refused to convene as a court in law. Yeah, they never do. Okay, they're always going to be, it's a court of equity. And so you have to play the game. You got to, you got to understand what's going on. And they did and they, they played the game and they went and they got a, a huge home run. 
Okay, so the order too. The order on the second page contains the phrase, the facts of the court's original jurisdiction inclusive to the people did speak and was placed into evidence. Okay? By noting this statement from the decision of the common law court, the court of the people, the Tenth Circuit Court recognized the decision, venue, and jurisdiction of the common law court. Now, listen to the words carefully. I've talked about this many times. This is very rare. Okay? The key words in some of these things, right, is the people, not the person. On my battle with the courts, right? Uh, I am one of the people. I put it in there. I'm a man. I put it in there. But the courts is bound to determine to put me in this non-fiction or put me in a fiction legal department of a person. Okay? Um, but there we go again. Words matter. See? The people have power. Now let's go back. This is the decision right up here. See, notice this, and it's filed. This is the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals, docketed, order and judgment, right? And it's got the star. Remember the asterisk? So you got to go and look at what the asterisk is. The asterisk is down here. This is all this stuff down here. And it said, then the facts of the court. Let's back up just a second there. Sorry See, about notice, that. This, and it's filed. This is the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals. Docketed, order and judgment, right? And it's got the star. Remember the asterisk? So you got to go and look at what the asterisk is. And I wanted to just to have that right there. Pause for you guys to be able to pause and read on this case as well. On the asterisk. Okay, the star. <laughs> I mean, we think these things are are so minute, but they have meaning. Everything that's on paper has meaning. That's the reason why we had to really clearly establish on paperwork, y'all, because everything has meaning. The asterisk is down here. This is all this stuff down here. And it said, then the facts of the court's original jurisdiction exclusive to the people Did speak and was placed into evidence. When was this? 87, right? 95, April 7, 1995. Yeah, can you forward it to me? And I'll send you the file. Okay. Uh, the 11th Let's Amendment, finish. Let's the 11th finish. Amendment is not as, you know, on the deadlines, it's not as crucial as they want you to believe. In my dad's case, um, he and his partners on the treasury. Okay, we're talking about this right now. We can talk about that later. I'm just talking about. Because you kind of mentioned it there about the the court taking it after the, the deadline for the filing of the appeal. As long as you're pursuing the action, you're you're covered. Yeah, it's easy to get them to extend the time. But it's kind of interesting that they asked him. They they just voluntarily extended it. It's easy to get them to extend time. You don't really have to come up with much of an excuse. But you gotta you gotta explain something. And and they went ahead and extended it and asked them to file. Anyway, so back to the topic at hand. It says, most important is to follow the asterisks behind the order of judgment, which I talked to, to the bottom of the page, and read the statement which it refers to. It says, this order and judgment is not binding precedent, except under the law of the case, res judicata, and collateral estoppel. Those are all, like, hugely important. This means that it is binding precedent for res judicata, which means that it has already been decided by a court of competent jurisdiction. And collateral estoppel, which means the opponent cannot bring it up again. What court of competent jurisdiction made a decision? The only court involved in the case that made any kind of decision was the common law court. The district court dismissed for lack of jurisdiction and the Tenth Circuit affirmed. Therefore, the doctrine of res judicata in this case could only apply to the common law court. Since the common law court cannot be reviewed, 
The Tenth Circuit could not state that they affirmed that decision. They can't say we agree. The common law court superior. All we could do was affirm the district court's dismissal for lack of jurisdiction. But by quoting from the common law court's decision and establishing that res judicata exists, the Tenth Circuit has agreed with the common law court. The people have spoken. The implications of this are truly astounding. So let's go back to this Tenth Circuit decision. Right here. Right? The asterisk right here. This order and judgment is not binding precedent except under the doctrines of law of the case, res judicata, and collateral estoppel. Right? Law of the case because it doesn't affect any other case. See what I'm saying? Res judicata has already been decided in collateral estoppel. They cannot bring it up again. They're screwed. <laughs> and there's a court seal. Hey, um, Glenn, I'd be interested in participating in this. Well, we'd appreciate it, certainly, and we'll let you know when we're ready to do something. And um, we need to find a place. So if you know of a place where we can use uh, for... All right, so we're going to stop there. They're going to go off on rambling on something else. But I just wanted to bring that case out um, more than anything else because uh, if this is actually a true case, which I have not looked up and verified myself, it's right? Docketed. But it looks legit enough uh, to uh, give pause to, right? So I'm still at arm length because I never read it, so this is hearsay for I, but that being said, if this is in fact a case, then it's evidence, okay, that there is still a common law court, we just got to learn how to use it, right, and enter it, and use the words to it, everything has meaning. Right? So, that being said, just so we the people news. Bye, y'all.